Welcome to the WIHS Ministry Roundtable, a bi-weekly video podcast and radio program where we meet in studio with ministry leaders for an extended interview to discuss from a biblical worldview, spiritual and practical topics that are both meaningful and engaging. I'm your host, Jessica Chenery, and joining the roundtable today, Pastor Chris Yount from Trinity Church in Windsor, Pastor Charlton Daly from Solid Rock Church of God in Manchester, and then we have Pastor Tom Tinker from Lighthouse Christian Fellowship in Meriden. Welcome each of you to the WIHS Roundtable. Good morning, Thank you. Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. We want to make the most of our time, so we're going to jump right in. And our topic for this week's discussion is why is communion important? As a Christian, I think communion is one of those spiritual practices sometimes that we get caught up in the act and the routine and forget the why are we doing this. So we're going to start with Pastor Chris Yount. Well, just call me Chris. All right, Chris. <laughs> so let's just start with um, the easy question. What is communion? Not such an easy question, Jessica. But anyway, um, <laughs> so it's just a time of when we're sharing together, when we're participating together. Communion can be, uh, that can be a, a name for a church gathering that we mm-hmm. come to commune uh, with one another. But I think mostly it's about uh, fellowship and coming together. Of course, we're speaking about coming together uh, to have a holy meal. Yes, yes. Well, so where did where did the act of communion come from when this practice started? Well, Jesus incorporated it, right? He, he initiated, he instituted it. So as we look at the four different Gospels, all have the story of the Last Supper, and mm-hmm. it's called the Last Supper. And I don't want, we're, the pastors are, they're afraid I'm going to say everything. And there's not, <laughs> I'm not going to leave anything, but I'm pretty sure I'll leave a lot out. Uh, but it, we call it the Last Supper because it was the last mm. Passover. So yeah. Jesus in, n- instituted it with his disciples to have this last holy meal together, this last Passover meal together. So that's where it started, and mm. it's been given to us as uh, something that we continue today, 2,000 yeah. years later. Where is the significance between Passover that we see in the Old Testament and then the Last Supper and the and communion that we see in the New Testament? So the significance is Jesus was coming as the, the Lamb of God, mm. so that when he was giving the, the Passover meal to his disciples, he was saying, really, I'm completing this Passover. I am the one, I am the holy lamb of God. I'm the perfect sacrifice so that whenever, that's why we call it the Last Supper, because it wasn't needed anymore after that uh, meal. So we continue to practice this powerfully uh, symbolic uh, meal together on a regular basis to recognize uh, the atoning work of Jesus. Mm. I used up everything, so I'm sorry. (laughs) Sorry, guys. I like that. I like that. Do you, do you have anything to add to what is communion? Well, I would just say it's, um, you know, a time for reminding us mm. um, that Jesus did die for us. Mm. And um, the significance, sign, uh, sorry, significance of the, the bread and the wine and the bread and the, or the blood of Christ uh, reminds us mm. of Christ's sacrifice for us. The Passover lamb was a sacrifice. And um, Jesus was the final sacrifice, as, as Chris said. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and um, again, too, the, one of the points is how the, the, the communion eclipsed the Passover. That was actually a very significant transition point that Jesus made, mm. um, because you, wouldn't, you don't necessarily need that Passover anymore because he had become right. the Passover. Mm. Right, Yeah. There was a, does anyone want to talk about the old covenant and then the new covenant that was made with, with uh, Christ dying on the cross? Go ahead. I, um, you know, the old covenant was, you know, one of the old covenants was circumcision, um, where, you know, the males of all, every family, Jewish family had to be circumcised. Um, Jesus did away with that at the last supper, Mm -hmm. basically. And now it's salvation through him. 
and through the atoning, cleansing blood of the Lamb of God, as we say. Uh, you know, us pastors like to be really holy about these things. Um, but he said, do this in remembrance of yes. me. Yeah. Yes. And that's remembering the last Passover, as well as remembering the first supper or the last supper, um, so that we can remember that Jesus did make this sacrifice and he is laying out for us the elements. This is my body mm. broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Just as the Israelites were told to sprinkle blood on the doorposts mm. and on the, the, man, the lintel of their homes so that the angel of death would not take their firstborn, uh, Jesus is the firstborn begotten Son of God, only born, obviously, and his sacrifice now is the blood, and his, the cross symbolizes what they put on the doorposts. And um, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Mm. He also said, I am the vine. That's the first of the I am's and the last of the I am's. And then in the middle of all that is, I am the door and I am the good shepherd. Mm. And if you look at the cross as the door to salvation through Jesus, the good shepherd, and then you see the significance that he brings to the body and blood. Mm. Anyone else want to share on that? I think he has completely <laughs> described it all. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Are no, we I'm done? <laughs> <laughs> I actually answered my own question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <laughs> we're going to actually you, <laughs> go to Pastor Tinker. Yeah. Can you talk to us why communion is important as a Christian? So what is, what is the purpose for us as a Christian okay. to partake in communion? Absolutely. Um, again, going back to the phrase, do this in remembrance of me, um, because I think too many times people will take communion and they're not even thinking about mm. what they're doing. Yeah. We yeah. were talking about yeah. this yeah. earlier yeah. together. Um, it just becomes another one of the things you do in church. Yeah. And I think I have been trying to emphasize more and more when I have our congregation take communion is if you have not asked for forgiveness of your sins, um, this is not for you right mm. now. Um, but there are so many things that Jesus taught us at the communion, at Holy Communion. I think one of the most interesting things is that John, in the Gospel of John, is he's the one that pointed out all the I am statements of Jesus. But strangely enough, his story of the Last Supper does not include the bread and the, and the wine, but it does include the washing of the disciples' feet. And I think besides realizing that the purpose of communion is a reminder of Christ's sacrifice for us, which we certainly cannot downplay. Um, it's also a reminder that we are to serve one another. Mm. And uh, the washing of the feet, you know, some churches make it a, an actual thing, um, and that's fine. But I think more like we need to look at it symbolically as we are to serve each other mm. in any capacity possible. And um, that's what we try to emphasize as far as going to take communion. Thank you. Yeah, and um, and also, if I may add, um, it's this love feast. It's this coming together. Um, mm -hmm. Jesus is um, sharing his body, mm. all of who he is, and there are the participants. And so as this continues, he said, do this in remembrance of me. As believers, if we are part of his body, then we want to come together. And if we think about it, um, what really brings us together? Meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A meal always brings us together. Mm -hmm. Jesus is always going to somebody's house to eat. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. because a meal brings you together. Mm -hmm. And so even earlier when he had talked about if you don't eat his flesh and drink his blood, people misunderstood what he's saying. They think it's literally eating mm -hmm. and drinking, mm -hmm. but is accepting, receiving him, all of us becoming a part of him because as we eat, um, we're becoming a part of him. So yeah. that brings in the significance of that moment. I like that. Mm -hmm. So in the Wesleyan tradition, I'm a Methodist, uh, we believe that uh, communion is a means of grace. So we do practice mm -hmm. what's called an open communion. So that there are different differences between the denominations and different yeah. churches yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. who can receive and who cannot receive. So like when I uh, go through the communion service with folks, I will say, we practice a well, a, a, an open communion, mm -hmm. but it's very necessary for you to come before God, confess your sins, yes. you know, turn away from the world, and turn to God. So mm -hmm. it's a, a, a powerful action that Christ is 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 doing for us. And we're you've heard the word atonement running around here, mm -hmm. so that's kind of a tricky big word. Yeah. Like a, next Pastor time, Tom, Pastor next Tom, time. Just <laughs> 
And atonement, you can break it down into three words, at one minute. This is a way that God enables us to become part of the family. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 And I also go back to Jesus' statement at the end of the Last Supper, at least from John's version of it, a new commandment I give to you, Mm -hmm. love one another, which sort of goes on to the extends the idea of serving one another, love one another. And he, he said many times, love your enemies, as mm-hmm. you, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Um, and it's all about love. And as Chris said, when you welcome others, you are teaching them that this is all about a sacrifice. It's all about, uh, about love and about service. Yeah. And um, Jesus' gentleness and humility comes through when you realize it is representing his body and his blood. Mm. Yeah. And I, and I think that's important to remember for us because it's not always easy to be uh, loving and, and, and have that humility. And so then when we remember what Christ sacrificed for us, it, is, it, is, it makes it easier for us to then see others through his mm-hmm. eyes and love them mm-hmm. as he loves them. Yes. Yeah, and then he said, do this in remembrance of me. So keeping that memory going of what mm-hmm. he has done. Mm-hmm. All right, so can any, any one of you, is there a time that you can remember when communion became personal to you? For, for me, um, it really became personal when I became a pastor, when mm. I investigated more what it meant. Um, and so one of the things I took on as a pastor is to teach my people now what it really means. Because growing up, I see us practicing it, or we had to do this, but didn't really understand the significance. Mm-hmm. But then realizing um, the significance for myself as becoming a pastor um, and just looking into the transition from the, um, the Old Testament, the, the Passover, and that, that transition that Jesus made, it becomes so much personal. You almost say, okay, the lamb, okay, we killed the lamb, we put the blood, mm-hmm. fine. But now he is, he is the, the lamb. lamb. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, so it became so much personal. So especially when he said, do this remembrance of me. So each time I do that, I remember in the sacrifice he made for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. so when I became a pastor, looked into it personally, um, that from then on, each mm-hmm. time. And no matter how often, each time is so significant right. for me. It's like, okay, I'm doing this for the first time. Yeah. It's not a ritual. It's, yeah. Power. Yeah. I, so for me, I've gone to the Holy Land a couple of times, and mm. on, on the tours that we do, uh, we receive communion or we give communion uh, at the Garden Tomb, which is a very yes. powerful experience. Wow. That. So that yes. has been really mm. uh, wondrous because you're, you know, you just had seen you know, where Jesus, well, we believe where Jesus was b- yeah. uh, buried, and the crucifixion was right close there. So to actually receive... Uh, the communion there, that remembering the Last Supper there is a very powerful memory for me. Mm. Yeah. I think the first time it really hit me was when I was asked in church by the pastor, it wasn't me at the time, um, if I wanted to help serve. Mm. And I was you know, holding the tray that had the cup or the bread. I don't even know which one I was holding, but my wife held one, I held one. And it was the first time that I really felt a complete part of the process because you know, I'm putting myself in Jesus' place. Mm. Mm. He's the one that served at the Last Supper, and here I am mm. being asked to serve. You know, it was always the pastor's responsibility and job. But when he asked, he would ask different couples each week, and then when he asked us, it's like, wow. And then when I became a pastor, it became even more special. Yeah, mm. thank you. Those are great, <clears throat> great. All right, so uh, before we go on to the last section, is there anything that you think that we haven't covered on the importance of communion? I, I, th- I was thinking one of the neat things that I try to do during Holy Week, and especially before Holy Thursday, is uh, to read the four passages in the Gospel. And there, I'll just give them to you really quick. It's Matthew 26, Mark 14. Luke 22 and John 13, and just read through them because they are a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. a, it's the same story, just right. spoken yeah. from different, different angles, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, that's something I try to do and encourage people to do uh, before Easter, certainly. Mm. Yes. Uh, it's a great way. And it doesn't take long, really, yeah. to do that, but what a powerful way to kind of remember. Sometimes we go from Palm Sunday celebration to Easter celebration, and we miss the whole stuff in between. In between. So yeah. I think yeah. it's important yeah. 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 to kind of walk that journey with Jesus during Holy Week. Yeah, and, and like, I mean, with... And the text that you're reading too, you try to 
immerse yourself in the culture of the time, mm-hmm. the setting of the time. I know the pictures, the paint of the Last Supper is not really how it looked. <laughs> right. So you want to go back to that Middle Eastern setting, um, just feel the air, um, um, the disciples' questions in their mind, um, what is mm. he doing? Um, so just kind of get there, go there, yeah. and just um, hear the rustling, bustling outside, people passing by, and what's happening there in that moment, what yeah. these guys were a part of, mm-hmm. and, and just immerse yourself in, in that moment so that when you do take part, it's as if you're back there at the very initial mm-hmm. one. So just thinking about it too. Mm-hmm. As don't just drink and eat or mm-hmm. eat and drink yeah. and just get on to the next thing, get in, get it over with and get out. No. No. Let this moment, you know, kind of resonate with you. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Oh, that's great. And I, I just think of when Jesus said, I do this for you. Mm. And again, it all goes back to the remembrance of me passage, but I did this for you. And then the next day is when he went to the cross yes. and literally gave yes. his life, you know, his broken body, blood pouring out. Mm. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that makes, that still makes me in awe of the awesome God (laughs) Um, that he would, that one person would do that. God would do this for us. Yeah. And uh, for me personally, we can take it personally, but we also realize he did it for all mankind. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a renewing and a refreshing moment. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we are going to uh, transition to the last part and um, pastor Daly, let's talk about preparing ourselves and hearts to partake in communion. Paul says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Uh, so what, what is that verse saying? Good, right. So as, as you approach it, again, you, you always want to consider um, the information, um, look at the interpretation before we get to the application, mm. right? So before we get, when we today read this scripture, right, we... we Sometimes tend to just jump to the application, but you want to step back a moment. Who was Paul talking to? So who was right. speaking? Who is speaking to? And why? Right. So this is Apostle Paul, um, uh, this known theologian. Theologian. Um, he, he come to know who God is. He's speaking to this church, and what was happening in this church? Immorality. Mm-hmm. Um, this disregard for the Lord's table, it had transitioned into uh, rich against poor, um, the elite mm. against the downtrodden, um, those who were prosperous were coming with a big meal and they would eat it before everybody else. And then those who were outcasts were left out. That's why Paul talks about, okay, if you're hungry, just eat at home. <laughs> this is not the place for right. gluttony. You're missing what this is. So the sin there was not so much of sin in their lives, but how they were treating Treating. this. Because this sign was pointing to somebody great. Mm. So because you're disrespecting the sign, you're disrespecting who it's point what it's pointing or who who it's pointing Mm. to. What what this sign meant. So it was the disregard. For, for this table because of what it meant. And so he said, listen, you need to examine yes. yourself. You need to stop for a moment and understand what you're participating in. Because then he goes on to share how, I mean, because of some who have been disrespectful to this moment, they died. Some are, some are sick. And, and because this is how God, God was responding to them. So it is significant for us now to, to apply, uh, apply this to our lives. When we come to this table, pause for a moment. Don't just rush through this. Check your life. Um, do a self-examination. Mm-hmm. What are your motives here? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, a good time for reflection. Is there unconfessed sin in my life? Right? So one of the things I love about this moment, too, okay, you came in to start and maybe you came with sin, but this is a moment. Mm-hmm. This is a moment mm-hmm. to think, to ponder. Of course, it's open, right, for those who acknowledge the significance of Christ's body because you don't want to participate in this and disregard the significance. So even though it's a communion, it's a last Uh supper, what it means is very important because how you respond to it is how you're responding to Christ himself. Mm, You gave that question to the right guy, Jessica. Mm. Uh, Yes. That was excellent. (laughs) Did you want to, did you want to add anything? I I wouldn't want to add anything to that (laughs) That was or take away from it. Mm -hmm. Pastor Daly, would would you lead us in in communion right now? Yes, yes, I would love to. Um, I would love to 
read from the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter mm. 11 from the NASB 1995 version. And I'm going to read from verse 23 to, to the end. Um, we'll ask those who are listening and want to take part in this can get something um, um, ready, some drink, um, some bread, um, anything that you have available to you. Um, just remember that what you're going to be using will just be a symbol. Mm -hmm. um, it's pointing to someone much greater. Mm -hmm. so, so allow me to read from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to the end. So if, this is Paul, of course, speaking to the Corinthian church and to us. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after, also after supper, saying, This cup in the, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Wow. Mm -hmm. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Allow me to read that verse one more time. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that you will not come together for judgment. Mm -hmm. The remaining matters I will arrange when I come. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Now, whatever you have available, you can take it. Allow me to pray for the emblems and whatever you are going to be using. As we know, these are just signs pointing mm -hmm. to someone greater. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment, O oh God, that we can be together to celebrate the communion, the Lord's Supper. Father, bread has been provided, most likely man-made, O oh God, and the grape juice or the wine has been also provided. Father, we pray that you bless these emblems now, and those who are listening, wherever they are, in their homes or wherever they are, that whatever they use, O oh God, they will not be focused on the emblems itself, but who it's pointing to. Mm. So, Father, would you bless these emblems now? May we, as we participate, O oh God, may our lives be transformed. Let healing take place in our bodies, O oh God. A transformation takes place. Let deliverance take place, O oh God. And may we not eat in vain or eat unworthily. So bless us and sanctify us now as we participate. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. This is a new covenant in my blood. He says, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me, mm -hmm. we may drink. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Daly, for leading us in communion. <clears throat> this has been a great discussion. Thank you for being here. 
Once again, I want to thank our guests, Pastor Chris Yount from Trinity Church in Windsor, Pastor Charlton Daly from Solid Rock Church of God in Manchester, and Pastor Tom Tinker from Lighthouse Christian Fellowship in Meriden. And I'm your host, Jessica Chenery, thanking you for joining us and inviting you back next time to the WIHS Ministry Roundtable. Thank you, Jessica. Thank Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us for the WIHS Ministry Roundtable, a bi-weekly video podcast and radio program that meets in studio with local ministry leaders to discuss from a biblical worldview, spiritual and practical topics that are both meaningful and engaging. The video podcasts are available at our WIHS YouTube channel, and the on-air editions can be heard Saturdays at 3.15 a.m., 12.15 p.m., and 5.10 p.m. right here at your station for Hope and Encouragement, 104.9 WIHS.